Welcome to the Managing Madrid podcast. It is Tuesday. We are here with Matt Wiltsey to discuss Real Madrid's low knees. And we have a lot to go through. And we are recording this about one hour before the Champions League game starts. Um, my eye is mostly on PSG Barca, as I'm sure most people's eyes are. So we are going to try to wrap this up in about half an hour and get this up before the Champions League games tonight. Joining me, as always, for the Lone Tracker is Matt Wiltsey. Matt, how you doing? Hey, Keon, doing well. Yeah, we uh, we definitely have plenty to talk about. I think uh, one of the highlights this weekend was seeing both Odegaard and Ceballos start for Arsenal. Yeah, and it, it's funny when you label it like that, Odegaard and Ceballos. It's so easy to forget about Ceballos in a game like this. Yeah. Cause like, so my mind was so fixated that Odegaard was on the field that I almost forgot about Ceballos. Like I'm supposed to be also watching Ceballos, but my mind was gravitating towards Odegaard because that to me was just more interesting. And obviously the novelty of this being a new thing with him, trying to see how we fit. So why don't we start there? So let's start with Arsenal's 4-2 win over Leeds. Odegaard starts um, on paper in the 10 role, his actual position that we can talk about. Um, and I thought had there was something exciting brewing there. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but it was just, I think... The the attacking pieces that they had in this game in Emil Smith Rowe, who who looks great, and him and Odegaard and Saka and Obama Young playing at a high level again, Ceballos kind of playing the anchor role behind them. I was I was excited about this. I thought this was an interesting direction to go in. I think there's a lot of young pieces here that make this more exciting than it's been at Arsenal. So talk us through what you thought. Um, obviously, this game was going on at the same time as Real Madrid's game, at least the first half anyway. So we kind of realized halfway through the Real Madrid game, at least I found out through your tweet that Odegaard and Ceballos were playing. So, um, so we, we didn't get to watch it live. Not all of it anyway, Uh, but talk us through Arsenal's starting lineup and where Odegaard and Ceballos kind of fit in there. Yeah. So Arsenal played a 4-2-3-1. Ceballos was kind of that uh, in that double pivot with Shaka and he was the right sided of the double pivot um, and Odegaard played, as you mentioned, with Saka and um, Emil Smith Rowe. And Emil Smith Rowe was on the left, Saka was on the right. And so Odegaard got that preferred uh, attacking midfield role. And <clears throat> those three, especially, I mean, that's, I think that's what everyone was getting really excited about was those three just behind Obama Yang and their connection, their movement. Um, honestly, Odegaard was good in this game, but I thought Saka and Emil Smith Rowe were, were even better. Like they were really, really good. And uh, it's just three young, dynamic, fun players. And um, when you looked at Odegaard and Ceballos in this match, it was funny. They definitely had a chemistry. Like I saw them combine quite a bit. They looked for each other on the pass. Um, afterwards, uh, the Athletic kind of did an article on Odegaard's full debut. And um, they talked about that, how after the game, Odegaard reemerges onto the field to embrace with Ceballos. Uh, the two Lonies shared more passes than any other players on the pitch. Ceballos found Odegaard eight times and the Norwegian returned the favor 11 times. So they, those two definitely look for each other. That was cool to see. And um, I thought Odegaard, like you said, he was kind of, I was, favoring watching him more so than Ceballos just because you you were attracted to it. You wanted to see it, like you said, Keon. And so I thought he first half was a little bit quiet. Pascal was kind of following him around and marked him really tightly. So he didn't have that much of the ball, but I thought second half, uh, he really got it into it a bit more, had some nice touches, some nice passes, like kind of you saw him growing into the game. Yeah, I agree. I thought he looked more comfortable as the game wore on. And it's interesting because like a lot of the discussion leading up to this has been where what what happens to Smith Rowe's development with the entrance of Odegaard, who could be a, potentially a transitory player, but you know, God forbid he may actually stay there. But I, I think I actually think this this makes everyone better. I actually thought that everyone kind of connected well in this game. Now, let's see what happens against a better defensive team than Leeds, but um I, I, I like the way they connected. I think they actually complement each other. Um, Smith Rowe, I agree with you that he was kind of more of a standout. Smith Rowe also, interesting stat, since he's been introduced into the team in December, no Premier League no Premier League player has had more assists than him. So he's oh. picking up the ball really well. And I think this this new kind of like people to combine with is um, 
is going to be good for his development. Mind you, I don't know how much he meant to pass that to Obama Yang for that particular <laughs> assist, shot, cross, whatever it was, found Obama Yang um, who converted it. Um, but what I liked about Odegaard in this game in particular was that there's a certain quickness he plays with. It's very direct. It's very fast, um, almost frenetic, but not in a bad way. But he's also capable of slowing the game down when needed. I just think there's a there's a certain decisiveness. I think decisiveness is the word. He knows what to do with the ball before he even gets it. And I, and I saw that a lot in this game. And I and I, I admired his verticality, but also his ability to slow down when needed and, and play it uh, in a different direction. I think he's a good hold-up player. I think he's a good link-up player. I think he's a great passer, obviously. And I started to see signs of Real Sociedad Odegaard, just the bounce, the the confidence that I think he grew into the second half with. I I I, I thought that was really encouraging. Yeah, I feel like, and I mentioned this on the last podcast too, I feel like he has a lot more confidence just right from the get-go with Arsenal than he ever has with, with Real Madrid. And maybe that's just the standard, the level of play, or whatever it may be, the coach, the confidence from the coach, who knows. But he definitely, it feels like he has a point to prove when he goes out there and he, he's confident. He's not afraid to tell his teammates where to go. And he knows what, like you said, he knows what he wants to do once he gets the ball. Um, I, can, I can tell you exactly where that confidence comes from. To me... It's that they're rallying around him. They're, yeah. they're, they're treating him as if he's a star player already. Everything that yeah. Arteta says about him. After the game, Saka, I think it was Saka who came out and said, this guy's amazing. Like, he's a genius. And like, you, don't really, you didn't really hear that from Real Madrid Circle so much because there was so much else going on. Mm-hmm. There's so many other players to deal with. But they're just rallying around him publicly, which I think it has to, it has to rub off on him. Yeah, that's a good point. Even Partey came out, uh, I think, the week prior saying... Yeah. When he played against him, Real Sociedad versus Atletico Madrid, he was just amazed because you couldn't get the ball off him because he thought so quickly and he passed it so quickly. And um, so you're you're right. I, I think that is probably probably the reason why he's playing with so much more confidence. Um, and then obviously Ceballos as well. I thought he played really well. Uh, I thought he had a few wayward passes, but overall was pretty clean in possession. He obviously got a nice assist to um, yep. Bellarine. Uh, I think it was the third goal right before halftime, and he megged the Leeds defender on the pass so uh, inside the box. So it was, it was a good performance from Ceballos as well. Um, let's see what happens in the next few games. I think there's some controversy with Obama Yang in breaking some COVID restrictions. He got a tattoo, oh, apparently, really? um, and then it was posted on social media, and that became a thing. I don't, I don't really know. I act, you know. I, I don't know what the restrictions are in the UK, or, but I understand that. I, I guess you can't be doing that stuff uh, yeah. unless your your tattoo artist has lived with you for like a year or something, which I doubt <laughs> yeah. is the case here. So 